Hello, everyone! Welcome to another episode of Plus Ones, a series where we take a single card, break down what it does, and explore what it can do. Last time, we took a look at the Dark Magicians, a new ace monster for decks looking to emulate the pint-sized prestidigitator himself, Yugi Moto. But what is a fusion monster without its fusion spell? Sure, we can begrudgingly play boring vanilla polymerization. We could use Miracle Fusion, but with card tricks if we wanted to rip off heroes. We could even run Eye of Tamias. Why are you not searchable? But those aren't the only way to field our new illustrious illusionist. Lean in close, and don't tell anybody, because I'm going to let you in on a little secret. A dark magic secret. This unique quick play spell has a lot of text on it, but it essentially boils down to this. You can fusion summon any fusion monster, or ritual summon any ritual monster, provided that you use at least one Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl for its material. And like, once again, this card art is so slick. It's got the iconic dark magical circle as a focus, with the polymerization swirl going around it, framed by the ritual lamps from Black Magic Ritual in a cool forced perspective shot. It's just, ugh, so good. It's a great way of showing not only what the card does, but it gives a thematic connection between the two very different summoning methods that the Dark Magician theme has at its disposal, despite them not gelling very well together. So, including the Dark Magicians, we currently have seven monsters that list Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl as specific material, and hey, hey, you! Yeah, you, you wait your turn! Dark Magic Secrets is very, very good at summoning our new fusion, but I think you're better off using Tamias for the rest of them. Like, I can totally see a future where warrior and dragon type monsters are printed that have Dark Magician themed effects, but as it is now, I'm not so sure about jamming unrelated cards in here just for the sake of summoning the Dragon Knights, when I really could just summon them the way that Raw and Takahashi intended. But what I love is that Dark Magic Secrets doesn't check for any specific name on the fusion monster, you just have to use at least one of the magicians. So any fusion, or ritual for that matter, that can be made with a level 6 or 7 dark spellcaster is fair game. And if you know me, you know what comes next. A gigantic list of all the monsters you can possibly make with dark magic secrets. So, let's start with the fusions. Thankfully, the list of monsters you can make here is much more reasonable than a certain other list I put together a while ago. These are all the ones that qualify, and we can cut quite a few of these right off the bat because, let's face it, you're not going to splash Dark Magician into other themes, so we're limited to cards that would work well being splashed into Dark Magician. But that does leave us with a few highlights. Archfiend's Manifestation is pretty cool if you want to toss in some Summon Skulls for that maximum anime flavor. If you end up with two Dark Magicians in your hand via something like Illusion Magic or the cruel whims of the Luck Gremlins, you could make First of the Dragons, which is a pretty funny way to outlast Orcist. Like, it folds to just about anything else, don't get me wrong, but it can't be sent to the grave with Dingirsu's effect, and they can't use Nightmare to swing over it. All of the Shadals are spellcasters, so you could conceivably run a Shadal engine, which means that you could use Dark Magic Secrets to summon the Dark Magicians when going on the offense, or spring an El Shadal Winda during your opponent's turn as a very effective summon limit. Now let's move on to the Ritual Monsters. Technically, you can Ritual Summon any Ritual Monster with this effect, but with a few exceptions, I'm going to limit myself to the level 7 and lower Rituals so that you just have to use one Dark Magician. And hey, that means you can even search them all with Preparation of Rites. Thankfully, we can cut a lot of these monsters right away, because we have a lot of them that are just either vanilla or so focused on their own theme as to be useless in our context. Archfiend's Awakening is here if you want to lean even more into that Summon Skull theming. Cyber's Magician is a pretty interesting choice if you manage to pair it with a Link monster, essentially giving every other monster you control protection from any kind of targeting. Evagishki's Gust Kraken and Mind August have some interesting utility. Gust Kraken probably has the most powerful hand attack effect in the entire game, and Mind August can either replenish your deck with specific cards, remove powerful cards from your opponent's grave before they go off, or both. If you manage to summon Magician of Chaos, now you can have a Dark Magician with an actual effect. Shocker! Necro's Clausulus, Unicorn, and Bryanak are all as good as they've ever been, but since you probably want to keep the utility ritual monsters as slim as possible, you might want to stick to just Unicorn Brio. 
Serevus is a great turn 1 play to disrupt inherent summons, and it's just as good of a monster protector in your hand any other time. Odd Eye's Gravity Dragon has got to be one of the best ritual monsters to gank your opponent with. They'll hardly ever see it coming, and once it hits the board it's too late. Its back row bounce effect can't be responded to, so you get to clear all disruptive traps from your warpath. And if your opponent wants to activate any effects, now they've got to pay 500 life points to do it. Yeah, any card effect. Imagine, your opponent's on Dark Magician, and out of nowhere they drop a Gravity Dragon, and now you have to relive all your Trickstar days. And now, my exceptions. They're both level 8, so just go ahead and run either a Relink or Sphere Karibo, whichever one you think is better. Lord of the Red just blows stuff up all the time. It has the same kind of impact as the Dark Magicians, where you just get even more value out of playing cards you were already going to play, right down to the fact that it even triggers off of your opponent's effects. Magician of Black Chaos Max, however, is not only the most thematic of the bunch, but also my personal favorite. When it's special summoned, you can tribute a monster, and for the rest of the turn, your opponent can't activate any monster effects. Now, in all fairness, other monsters that have similar effects, namely as a thought, are easier to summon and are more difficult to interrupt. But the core of the effect is still there. It'll either force negations from a monster heavy strategy, or you'll be able to proceed with your turn unabated. And if you make sure to tribute Max itself, well then it can't get hit by impermanence. Also, in reference to its effect monster printing, you get to add a spell from your graveyard to your hand whenever you destroy a monster by battle with him. Alright, now that we've rounded up all the best candidates, do we have any that are more than just fun includes? Well, I really do think the Shadal idea has legs. Having access to Winda has proven to be invaluable to decks that can make it going first, and using a Shadal as the spellcaster requirement for the Dark Magicians makes it even more powerful. As for the rituals, I feel like a side deck approach would do wonders here. You can main Preparation of Rites and Serevis, as the protection will likely be relevant in a wide variety of matchups, and then you can substitute Serevis for more focused cards as the matchups require. Gust Kraken is good against any deck going first, and Gravity Dragon will make Orcist, Salamangrate, Sky Striker, and Altergeist feel a lot less safe going second. And with cards like Dark Magical Circle and Magician's Rod, you'll likely be seeing this auspicious quick play spell whenever you need it. That wraps up this episode of Plus Ones. Are there any particular combos you're looking forward to pulling off when this card gets printed in the TCG? I know I ruled out a lot of options to keep this video from being the next Muddy Mud Dragon analysis, so I'm bound to have skipped over some cool interactions. Let me know what your favorite ones are in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe for more coverage of the Magical Hero set. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Bye bye